I'm wearing a shirt, which I think I purchased about 40 years ago on a little holiday down in Longboat Key, which is not far from Sarasota. Uh, I want everyone to remember to pray for the folks in Florida right now. But I want to tell a story, actually a story that happened to my father. He used to tell this, and it's a very powerful message, and I think we need to get a grip of it. Whatever happened to hell, I'm not sure. It's never mentioned anymore, in even in evangelical circles. But it's still there in the Bible, and it's still there, far from God in the darkness, the blackness of darkness. Second Thessalonians 1.9 says, These shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord. Now, the Berean Study Bible puts it this way, they will suffer the penalty of eternal destruction separated from the presence of the Lord. This is what will make it so terrible. Separated from the presence of the Lord. The Lord is the source of all life, all joy, all peace, all purpose, all satisfaction, everything for which the human heart longs. And they have made a conscious choice to separate themselves from God. God is in the reconciliation business. He moved heaven and earth to do it. He provided Christ as the Savior. He uh, had his apostles and prophets write the scriptures to invite men and women to come. He sent out his Holy Spirit to plead with people, to convince them of their need of a Savior. But when in the end they say no to God, he's a perfect gentleman. And he takes them seriously. He doesn't send people to hell. They're going to hell. And he's seeking to save them from going there. But he gives everyone their own choice. Now, this story occurred many years ago. My father and mother had just received a new grandchild. And my dad had gone up to the shopping mall near their home to purchase some item. I don't know what it was for the new grandchild. And as he walked into the store, he'd been there before, uh, the lady behind the counter saw him coming. And with a sigh, she said, oh, Mr. Nicholson, I've had a hard day. Don't preach at me. <laughs> and my father said, I'm not going to preach at you. And she said, well, I mean, I personally believe that this world is all the hell we'll ever have. Well, my dad said, I, I'm not going to preach at you, but I should point out you've made a fundamental mistake there. This is not all the hell that people will ever have if they reject the Lord Jesus Christ. This is all the heaven they will ever have. W.P. Nicholson, no relation as far as I know, was a great evangelist in Ireland, the north of Ireland, many years ago. He didn't write many books, but he did write one, and the title of it is quite shocking. It's called God's Hell. And we recognize that hell was not made for people. The scripture specifically says it was made for the devil and his angels. But if people side with the devil in his long war against God, if they refuse to give God his rightful place. Indeed, what they are doing is putting the devil on the throne of their hearts. Those are the only two options. The devil has wanted God's throne, and he masquerades under the title, the God of this world. And people who think they're being free by rejecting God, are actually slaves of Satan. There are only two groups of people, those who are in the kingdom of darkness and those who are in the kingdom of God's dear Son. And you're one or the other. And if you refuse God's Son as your Savior, you will be blocked out from fellowship with God forever. In other words, everything that your heart longs for can only be found in God. And if you reject him, 
the scripture speaks about everlasting destruction here. Now, it doesn't mean that you will cease to exist as a being. But instead of being like those in the presence of God who will be eternally growing and developing and enlarging and enriching in their lives, you'll be going the opposite direction. You will be slowly collapsing in on yourself forever. God made us eternal beings, and we will exist forever somewhere. And the choice is ours. No one is in hell except those who have rejected God, those who have said no to God. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But the horror of this lostness that the Bible speaks about is that you will be sent away from the God who is everywhere. As he describes it here, sent away from the presence of the Lord. And you will be unknown by the God who knows everything. Listen, here are Jesus' words. Depart from me, I never knew you. The only purpose for which you were created was to enjoy and please God. And if you don't do that, it's just as if you never existed. What a horrible fate. Why would anyone choose that? The same one who someday will say, depart from me, is the one who presently says, come to me. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden. I'll give you rest. He wants us. He died for us. He pleads with us. But eventually, he'll take us at our word. And if we say no to God, no to Christ, there's only one alternative. God is going to fill the universe with the joy and blessing and glory of his Son. But if you don't want that, there's one dark spot in the world, in the universe, and that's the place of rebels. And if you choose that, strange as it may seem, God in his love will not force you to heaven. He will let you have your way. Listen, friend, flee from the wrath to come. Rush to Jesus. He's still in the business of saving souls. And he'll take you as is if you'll come to him today. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved.